Circle. In this cave by the restless sea, we are met to call from out the past stories strange and weird. Bell keeper, pull the bell so all may know we are gathered again in the weird circle. again their immortal tale, The Vendetta. Give me a penny, mademoiselle. Just a penny for an old lady. I'll tell you a story if you'll give me a penny, monsieur. Sorry, Gypsy, not today. How about you, madame? Me? How about a penny for my story? Well, Just uh... a penny for a story. A story you won't forget. I never could resist a story. It's a deal. You tell the story and I'll give you the penny. Well, we'd better sit down on the front steps of the museum here. Now, the story starts in an attic of an old pension. The story is of two lovers who were sitting together in an old attic in a two-gable building where the wind softly shook the old shutters as it blew by. The girl was beautiful, and those two were in love, and she was telling him the story of the vendetta. Jenny, my darling, tell me about the vendetta. It was so long ago, Louis, but I'll never forget the fires and the flames. Sometimes at night I still think of myself as that little girl in Corsica, sitting with her mother in the living room. I can still see our sworn enemies, the Porter family, breaking in, pouring kerosene on our rugs and see the fire start. Those fires which were meant as our funeral pyre. I can still hear my mother scream before she died. Somehow, my father saved my life and told me to hide in the wastelands and wait for him. And then there was more fire, more flames... And the vendetta was settled. The Porter family was dead. And then we came to Paris, to the pension next door. I remember the ugly white stone building, the long, rickety flight of stairs to the three-room flat on the third floor. I remember the landlady who was so kind and showed us to our room, talking in that empty hallway. You'll like it here, Monsieur de Piombo. You and your little girl, pretty child, isn't she? Watch out for the stairs. Thank you. I'll be careful, Madame Manet. We're all one happy family here. A German family lives on this floor, and a young newlywed couple lives on this floor. And guess who owns the building next door? Monsieur Servin. He's an artist and runs an exclusive school for young women who are interested in the arts. Well, these are your quarters. Your room's in the back. The child's room is just to the left. You have your own cooking facilities if you wish to use them. Yes, you told us. Well, I guess you want to be alone to make friends with your new quarters. Rooms are like people, have to be treated with kindness. Be happy. Are you tired, Jenny? Very, very tired. Father, are we going to see Mother again? They took her from us, Jenny. But the porters have paid for it. With their lives. All of them. You're all I have left, Jenny. You're all I have left in the world. You'll be a little queen someday. I'll make you a queen, Jenny. And Paris will be at your feet. You've such lovely black hair, Jenny. Such lovely, warm black hair, darling. Never leave me. Father, darling, I'll never leave you. How could I? We belong together. In 
And so you and your father lived in the pension? And you were happy, Jenny? Oh, so happy, Louis. You've no idea. Well, when I was 20 years old, I started to paint. Our landlady showed my painting to Monsieur Servin, and Monsieur granted me a scholarship in his school. My easel was in the corner of the studio, and when I climbed on a chair, I could peer through the skylight into Monsieur Servin's attic across the way near the gable. The attic always fascinated me. It was dark and lonely and struck a responsive chord somewhere inside me. And then last week, I saw you there, darling. And I knew you were wounded. I started to paint you. I stood on the chair looking at you. Laurie was singing behind me and Amelia was talking too much. The little chime clock on the wall chattered too. They say the soldier escaped somewhere in this neighborhood, but they'll get him. There's no doubt of that. After all, he deserves to die. Every Bonapartist soldier deserves to die. After all, who are they? Nothing but a lot of cutthroats and Corsicans. Amelia, what a cruel thing to say. Think of our darling Ginevra. Oh, honestly, Laurie, you make me sick. Hmm. What are you doing standing on a chair, Ginevra? I, I was seeing something in my mind's eye. You were talking about... Napoleon, Amelia. I'm interested in your views. Oh, of course. You're a Corsican. Are you for or against Napoleon? Since Napoleon's been banished, it doesn't make much difference, does it? Well, maybe not. Except there's a soldier of Napoleon's army hiding out in this district. The police might be interested in you, Ginevra, if you're a sympathizer. If somebody were to tell them about you. Amelia, stop it. Let's see what you're painting, Ginevra. Oh, no, no, Laura, please, oh, I... darling, I... it's a lovely piece of work. Who is he? Who is who? This man Ginevra's painting. Oh, a man? Well, we didn't know. Mademoiselle, would you please return to your easels? No artist ever gave anything to art who supplied the world with gossip. We were just admiring the Corsican's work, Monsieur Sauvin. She's painting a portrait of a young man. Mm -hmm. Well, Mademoiselle Amelia... I'm sure if you worked as diligently as Mademoiselle Ginevra, somebody would admire your work. It is four o'clock, ladies. Time for you to go home. I'm only half finished, monsieur. Four o'clock, Mademoiselle Laurie. Your family will worry. Naturally, Laurie. Come along and stop being super conscientious. Good night, Ginevra. Oh, wait for me. I'll be right along. Mademoiselle Ginevra. Oh, yes, monsieur. Would you mind staying after class? Of course not, monsieur. Good night, Monsieur Sauvin. Good night, Monsieur Good night, Good night Mademoiselle. You'll find Mademoiselle Ginevra very interesting to talk to, Monsieur Sauvin. Especially if you ask her why she stands on a chair looking in an attic window. Good night, Monsieur Sauvin. Good night, Mademoiselle Amelia. I'm sorry, Monsieur. I caused you so much trouble. That is a fine painting, Ginevra. How long have you known the soldier has been hiding in my attic? Just today. How much has Mademoiselle Amelia seen of him? Just this painting. Monsieur, please take me to him. Nobody knows he's up there but me. He's wounded and he looks so lonely. Your father would never forgive me if I do. And I'd never forgive you if you don't. Please, monsieur. Nobody will ever know, I swear it. Please, monsieur Servan. Please. And so he brought me to the attic. And I met you and loved you from the first time I saw you two weeks ago, Louis. Oh, I, I know all the words that rhyme with your name. I know all the funny little wrinkles in your face. And the way you smile and the way you talk. Oh, Jenny. Jenny, darling, darling, you don't know what you're saying. I'm a hunted man. If I'm caught, I'll be hung. If you were killed, I'd be by your side. I'm sick and wounded. And you know so little about me. I know everything about you. We're fellow Corsicans. You're a brave soldier, and I love, love, love you. Oh, where you go, I shall go. And your people shall be my people. Jenny, I've wanted to tell you. I've wanted to tell you so many times. Oh, darling, Don't darling. stop me, please, darling. We can't be married. Don't you understand? I love you. I love you so much. Oh, Louis, father can help you leave the country and I can join you later. And we'll return to Corsica. Corsica, Jenny. 
Warm sun and green meadows and the yellow pasture land. Oh, oh darling, you like Corsica so very much like it. Tempestuous and warm. And your eyes are brown like the trees in the fall. And when you're happy, they're brown with red flames. Those are the fires of the vendetta, Louis. And when you're sad, the light dies. Like the sun on the ocean. I love you. I love you, Eugenie. If only I were brave enough to own you. I'd own you in a little bit of Corsica in a world of our own. Oh. Oh, don't make it any more difficult for me than it is. What's wrong, Jenny? Look at the skylight in the studio. I could have sworn I saw somebody at the skylight window. Oh, nothing more than the cleaning woman, Jenny. Oh, my little darling. My darling, Jenny. Jenny for Bella. Bella, Bella, Jenny. What are you doing standing on the chair looking out the skylight window, Amelia? Oh, what are you looking at? It... You know very well what I'm looking at, Laurie. You've known all along about Ginevra and her lover and their secret rendezvous, haven't you? What if I have? My father, as head of the Paris police force, will be very much interested in finding this escaped soldier. If you help the soldier escape, I'll tell my father you helped him to escape. They'll put you in jail, Laurie. In a dark hole of a jail. With rats and roaches. And they'll forget about you and... Let me go, that Amelia. That is, if you don't keep your mouth shut. My arm. What are you going to do, Amelia? Wait and see, Laurie. And if you want to stay out of jail, you keep your mouth shut. I think I'd better see Ginevra's father. Monsieur de Piombo? Yes? I'm Amelia Farrar, a schoolmate of your daughter's. Oh, please come in, mademoiselle. My daughter is late from school, but... I'm sure she'll be home soon. Well, I... I didn't come here to talk to your daughter, monsieur. I came to talk to you. A sort of ugly thing happened at our school lately, and... Oh, well, it's sort of difficult to explain, but... Well, monsieur Sauvain has been allowing an escaped soldier to hide in his attic. <laughs> Not Sauvain. The rascal. How could he? Well, every day, Ginevra and this soldier see each other, and... I hear they intend to marry. It's the scandal of the school, monsieur, and... Well, if he's arrested, Ginevra will be in trouble, and... Are you positive of this, mademoiselle? Oh, yes, and I'm worried for her. You see, my father is head of the Paris police, and... I found out this escaped soldier is a fellow Corsican of yours, and... Well, you probably know him. He's parading under the name of Louis D'Angelo. But in reality, his name is Luigi Porta. Youngest son of the Porta family... And the only survivor of a tragic fire which occurred in Corsica 15 years ago. Luigi Porta. <laughs> I'm sure Ginevra can take care of herself. Well, shall I report him to the police? No, maybe it won't be necessary for 24 hours. No, no, I think I'll wait. Good day, Monsieur de Piombo. Ginevra. Never, Bella. Not a porter. Oh, no, you never, me. Not. Not marrying Luigi Porter. Not my own daughter. <laughs> If she be married to a porter, she must die by my hands, by the terms of the vendetta. for you here on the landing, Amelia. What were you doing in my father's apartment? Don't you wish you knew? Tell me, Amelia, or I'll choke it out of you. 
I was always told the Corsicans were a crude people. I didn't know how true that was until now. Don't speak so loud. What do you know about me? What do you know? Everything that's important to know about you. I know that you're Corsican peasant blood, and I don't like associating Corsican with you. Corsican peasant blood, you... <gasps> oh, you'll be sorry, Ginevra. Very sorry for this. Amelia. Stop following me. I must know the truth. Did you tell my father about... Meeting a lover in secret? Yes. It's time somebody stopped you. Who did you say this secret lover of mine was? I didn't know you knew he is Luigi Porter. Oh, I thought you at least had loyalty to your father. Did you tell my father? Did you? Yes, Ginevra, I told your father. I oh. thought he'd prefer to know the truth. Goodbye, little princess. Oh. Heard someone arguing <gasps> out here. Oh. Mademoiselle. Oh, pauvre petite. Mademoiselle, don't cry. If somebody hurts our feelings, you'll get over it. Madame, Madame, would you do me a favor? Yes. Go upstairs to my father and tell him, tell him you've sent me out on errand. Please, please, Madame. Poor child, are you in trouble? Please, please, for the love of heaven, go upstairs and tell my father you sent me out. And make the lie good. Make him believe it. You must make him believe it, Madame. Please, please, go upstairs now. Go upstairs right this minute. I thought you wouldn't mind, Monsieur de Piombo, if Ginevra went on this little errand for me. Just a few blocks away to the butcher, and I, I've hurt my foot. Naturally, your foot. A, a stub the toe. For a stub toe, you walk very well. Thank you, Monsieur. Very well indeed. I, I think I'd better go downstairs. Uh, don't. Please don't. I'd much rather you wait up here, Madame Manet, so that I may see this parcel Ginevra is to bring you. But, monsieur... I said we'll wait up here, madame. Six o'clock. We'll wait till seven, madame. Till seven. She's not here by then. You and I will find her ourselves. I had to warn you, Louis. You're in such danger. Don't you understand? Father will kill you with the vendetta returns. Jenny, oh, Jenny... Luigi or Louis, it makes no difference to me. Love knows no names. And I love you, Luigi Porter, with my whole heart. But if we're married, you'll become a porter. And by the terms of a vendetta, as long as the Piomba lives, all porters must die. If you become my wife, you must die as well as I. Without you, Louis, I wouldn't be alive. My life, my love. We'll take our chance. If only Monsieur Servin is right. If only he can get us out of the country at midnight. We must believe it. Darling, as soon as the priest arrives and we're married, I'll return home and wait. I'll wait until midnight. Be careful, darling. Be careful. Nothing can go wrong, Luigi. The carriage will be waiting and Servin has our passports already. How can you get out of the house without your father suspecting? I'll find a way somehow. I... Oh, oh, Monsieur Servin, you frightened me. I'm sorry, my dear... But the priest is waiting for you. Darling Ginevra, take my arm, my sweet. Oh. Lead the way, Monsieur Servin. Father, I'm sorry I'm so late, Father. Are you angry with me? How could I be, Bellissima? Tea is ready, Ginevra. It's been ready a long time. Waiting for you. I'm so sorry. Shall I warm the water? It's not necessary. Come, Carissima. Sit by the window with me. As you did when you were a little girl. Very little girl. Of course. How gay the table looks, Father. Almost as if we were celebrating something. Candlesticks, the best tea plate. Sit down, darling. Here, next to me. And the very best teapot. And the old Corsican knife. It's a lovely knife. I've always loved it. What are we going to carve with it? You've no cake. Your tea, Ginevra. Thank you. I knew you'd leave me for some man or other. I've always known that, Jenny. Come, Carissima. Sit close to me. As you did when you were a little girl. But, Father... You're still my little girl. Father, you I... You draw away from me. 
Are you afraid of me? No, Father, no, darling, no. My little princess. My beautiful Ginevra. Charisma. With your heavy, long black hair. Such heavy, warm black hair. Oh, the hair is dark. Oh, the hair is thick and fragrant. Oh, the hair is beautiful. But yours, Jenny, yours is Corsica. Corsica. Don't look at me, Ginevra, Cara. Cara, Cara, look straight ahead out the window. Yes, Father. What do you see out there? Trees and grass. And people laughing, happy people. A boy and a girl and a baby. And an old man. A lonely old man, Cara. There's no old man out there, Father. Father, what are you reaching for? The knife on the table. Why? You and the knife are the only two things left to me from Corsica. No, don't turn around. Keep looking out the window, Ginevra. Keep telling me what you see, my darling, Carissima. Why, Father? Are the boy and the girl happy? Father! Father, Ginevra, are they happy, darling? Father! Father, father. I'll hold you in my arms, my darling, and the pain will go away. Father. I waited for you for two long hours. I stood by the window watching and waiting. I saw Savant leave and return with the priest. Oh, Cara, Cara, Jeanine. Then you came home. Not my carissima. Not my darling. Oh, Father, the pain. <laughs> you came back to me, the wife of Luigi Porter, your mother's murderer. You were piombo to become a porter. The pain, Father. The pain. <laughs> Goodbye, Ginebra. Your hair, your warm black hair. The knife. There. Draw it out so slowly. And my life for your life. The life of a piombo for the life of a porter. Carissima. Carmilla. Carmilla. You'll not be alone. Not alone. In death. Jenny, Jenny, we've waited so long. Jenny, Jenny, my darling, what's happened to... She's dead. Both of them. And dead. Oh, how could dead hates come out of the past and murder the only beauty in my life? Oh, Jenny, my darling, darling Jenny. My wife for five short hours. The knife. Yes, that's the way. Yes. The knife. Here. Where to be sure. Goodbye, my Jenny. Luigi. Luigi. Jenny. I'm coming to meet you. I hear your voice. Luigi. What have you done? Luigi. I'm coming, Jenny. Luigi. Oh, Luigi, could you wait? I'm not going to die, Luigi. I'm not going to die. Jenny didn't die. She lay for months in a hospital, trying to die, not caring to make any effort to do anything. The doctors made her live. She had no will to, and she hasn't since. She hasn't sinned. What happened to her, Gypsy? What did she do? She lived in memories. 
But who cares? Who cares about Ginevra now? She might be wandering the streets. An old woman. An old woman telling stories for pennies. Here, Gypsy. Here's your penny. Thank you, madame. Thank you. A story? A story for a penny? Just a penny, please. Just a penny. From the time-worn pages of the past, we have heard the immortal tale, The Vendetta. Bellkeeper, toll the bell. Thank <laughs> you.